All right, coming to today's topic, the title of today's sermon is Two Essentials, Don't Give It Up, which is tongues and prophecies, they build you up. Okay, two essentials, don't give it up, tongues and prophecies, they build you up. Last year was a year of immunity, right? Am I right? Was it a year of immunity? People have been talking all about immunity, getting yourself immune, um, getting all kinds of medicines to get yourself immune. Uh, the price, the prices of zinc has gone up, vitamin C has gone up, all kinds of immunity builders have gone up. The pharmaceutical companies that is making zinc and vitamin C, they really made a lot of money. They become, and if you had some shares in those companies, probably you would have made a lot of money too. Um, ginger sale has gone up. Am I right? How many of you drink ginger? I have colleagues who have drunk so much of ginger last year that they burned their guts so badly that they have now to treat that guts so ginger is ginger and 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 uh, garlic and uh, cinnamon and all kinds of uh, immunity boosters have been going viral on internet and people have been drinking of course these are all good i'm not saying these are bad but people are all trying their level best to get whatever kind of immunity possible to fight yourself against the coronavirus so my question today to you all of you is do you need as much as you need physical immunity, do you need spiritual immunity? Is spiritual immunity something that is um, something to be thought about, something that is uh, genuine, or is it only physical immunity that we need to look into? When you talk about spiritual immunity, that means, that brings to the question, do we need to build yourself up spiritually? Is that required? Do we need to build yourself spiritually? Is that something that you need to do? Or is that that come automatically when you are a Christian? That's what we're going to see today. Two weeks back, we talked about love that never fails. That is the previous chapter. And today we're going to talk about from 1 Corinthians chapter 14. But 1 Corinthians 13, we talked about a love that never fails. In spite of situations that happen in our lives, there may be tough situations that happen in our lives. So I, um, did I go offline? Okay, sorry. Am I back online? I think I lost. Okay. There may be tough. Okay, thank you. There may be tough situations that has happened in our lives, but still, yet, love prevails and we blossom in that. Life might throw dung at you, but still, we grow out of it and we, we, uh, we perform better and we blossom in that. So, all this prevails and tongue, we saw the tongues will stop, prophecy will stop when the perfect comes. And we saw that it was about the perfect one, which is Jesus Christ. When the perfect Jesus Christ comes, then all the other, these divisions, the impartials will go. Divisions, partial, uh, uh, in, uh, the, the partitions we saw. That is going to disappear when, when the perfect comes or when we become perfected. That is at the second coming of Christ. That's what we saw last week. So love never fails. Love will always prevail. Even in heaven, love is going to prevail. But tongues and prophecies will come to an end when we are all perfected or when we see the perfect one. When Jesus comes, we become perfect. At that time, we don't need tongues anymore. We don't need prophecy anymore. We are with Christ. But the most important thing, as we stopped last two weeks back, was in all this, whatever you do, whether prophecy or in tongues, in anything of that you do with the gift of love, the most important thing in all that is, number one, which is love. Which What is the most important thing? Love. Love is the most important thing in all this. If you do all the spiritual gifts, whatever you activate in spiritual gifts, if you don't have love, it becomes zero. It becomes a big zero. So most important thing is love. It's like some of the cooking dishes that we have. You know, if you go to Japan, you'll see that all the dishes have soya sauce in it, right? You have sushis in soya sauce. You'll have soup in soya sauce. You'll have all the dishes, rice with soya sauce. Everything you'll have soya sauce. Soya sauce is the main thing in the Japanese food. Or if you go to Italy, you'll find that uh, olive oil is the main ingredient in most of the dish in Italy, like pastas or Spanish dishes. It's pastas and olive oil, salads and olive oil. You have... Uh, Rosate is olive oil. I, you know, everything is in olive oil. Olive oil is a main ingredient in the South Mediterranean regions. If you go to Kerala, what is the main dish that you have in Kerala? In all our dishes, you'll have coconut. Coconut oil 
coconut uh, grated coconut squeezed coconut coconut milk sliced coconut chipped coconuts everything in coconut every dish i remember a time when me and my friends my colleagues not colleagues my classmates we were went on a, a project trip to kerala and when we went to kerala these are all people from north india and ba- bangalore karnataka andhra pradesh they all came to kerala the place is so beautiful they love to the play so much but when they started eating the food they found out that every dish that is made in kerala everything has coconut the fish has coconut the beef has sliced coconut or you'll have coconut milk even the drink is coconut everything you people sleep on coconut coconut mattress you work with coconut coconut ropes and i told them guys we are living under the umbrella of the coconut tree everything is good so there are certain things which are like the main ingredient of certain food in the same way you and i when we whatever we do in whatever we do let love be the main ingredient in our lives love is number one if without this love number one everything else becomes a waste whether it's prophecy or gifts or tongues whatever it becomes a dish So we are going to see about today about prophecy and tongues what Paul is talking about here he says love is number 1 but you have to also pursue all this that is prophecy and tongues so let's turn our bibles to 1st corinthians chapter 14 verses 1 1st corinthians chapter 14 verses 1 we're going to be in chapter 14 1 to 25 on and off we'll read a couple of verses in the middle of that it says pursue love and earnestly desire spiritual gifts especially that you might prophecy now in this chapter you're going to see p- prophecy and tongues more important and it's focused on in this chapter and it is important that's why paul picks it up and stresses on it again and again so we have in ch- verse 1 we say it's uh, paul says pursue love and earnestly spiritual uh, earnestly desire spiritual gifts especially that you would prophesy the verse 5 first corinthians chapter 14 verse 5 it says like this now i want all of you to speak in tongues listen to this i want all of you to speak in tongues but even more to prophesy the one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless someone interprets so that the church may be built up we're going to see what is building up today all right so pursue prophecy i want earnestly uh, to speak i want all of you to speak in tongues and go to verse 39 same chapter first corinthians chapter 14 verse 39 and says like this so my brothers earnestly desire what earnestly desire to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues do not forbid speaking in tongues so this chapter is focused on tongues and prophecy desire prophecy all of you should speak in tongues don't forbid anybody to speak in tongues and these are two main things and we're going to talk about that so coming back to verse 4 uh first corinthians chapter 14 verse 4 it says uh, the one who speaks in tongues builds up himself but what one who prophesies builds up the church the one who speak in tongues builds up himself but the one who prophesies builds up the church so what is this building up what is this building up meaning the one builds up himself which says tongues builds up himself and prophecy builds up the church the church means the gathering of believers so when you speak in tongues you're building up yourself while when you prophesy you're building up the gathering or the group of christians or believers you're building them up have you seen this beauty pageants beauty pageants you have seen this miss universe miss world competition right all these beauty pageants you see the final um uh Uh, final results they line up together and uh, they you know they have this uh, they they represent the country whether it's miss india or miss us across their chest and they stand and they are going to be picked as to who is miss universe or miss um, world or whatever the competition is for but behind all this before they come up on stage in this final show you will find that this is something you won't see but all of them go through a rigorous exercise to maintain a certain amount of body mass this is so important for them how they look how they present their bodies now i'm not saying that this is i'm not validating what's going on there but this is something that happens before they come up finally on stage there's a lot of work behind the scene lot of maintenance of the body the body mass 
the looks, the skin color, uh, uh, the way they present themselves, all this exercise they do behind the scene. Or for example, look at uh, the, uh, the football players. Football. You all see football games, the matches that you see, uh, the British Premier or the Spanish League or the Italian matches. They all have, foot, we all see the football matches, but we all, we don't realize the amount of training that goes behind to before they, or before they come up on the field. They have to train so much on their legs, they have to, on the running skill, on the movement, the maneuvering, they train so much. Now, maybe you're not a football player or a football lover, you might love basketball. But so even if you're a basketball player, there are people, they have to go undergo training, not just on legs, they have to undergo training for their hands. Like the football players undergo training, probably only most, they focus more on the legs. But the basketball players, they have to train themselves, they have to build up their bodies, train their bodies, build the bodies up to be fit to play the match. Now, I know if you're not a basketball lover too. If you are a cricket lover or a uh, or an IPL fan, then the cricketers also, they all train too. They all undergo rigorous training. For the couple of hours they are on the field, which you see and you focus on, you don't see the months and months of training that goes behind the scene to train and build their bodies up so that you can be, so that they can be fit and you, uh, they can be uh, a winner and they can defeat the opponent they all go through this vigorous training if physically if people have to train so much to fight a match for a three-hour match can I ask you in your spiritual realm do you need any kind of training or do you need any kind of building up is that required or no you might be thinking probably not some of you might be thinking that well well God will take care of it right God will take care of it. Yes, God does take care of it. God is there to support you and, and bless you and to help you on that. He is there with you no matter what. But spiritually, there are some things that you need to build up to. And that's what Paul talks about here, to build up, uh, to build you up. Speaking in tongues builds you up, strengthens you. Prophesying builds the church, builds the believers. Some of you might be saying, yes, I'm praying, I'm reading the Bible that doesn't build you up. That sustains you. That sustains you. But you need something to grow stronger and stronger in. And in that realm is where tongues and prophecy comes in it. So the meaning of building up. The meaning of building up. What does build up do? How is what is building up do in the in the in the in the Greek term which is used here? It it is the same term used to construct a building. Like you build up step by step you build up you start with the foundations of a building then you go into the walls or the columns and you build the beams then you cast the roof or the slab and then you go plastering stage by stage you build up so this is what happens when you this is what is implied when paul says speaking in tongues builds you up okay or in other words to help you improve the ability to function in living responsibly and effectively if you want to live responsibly and effectively you need to build up yourself. That's what happens. Or to increase the potential to fo help someone focus in life. To be nearer to fullness and completion. These are all meanings of building up. To build you up completely so that you achieve yourself, your potential, the maximum potential level you can achieve. That is called building up. That is what is required. That is what Paul is saying. Speaking in tongues builds you up. Speaking in tongues builds you up. Spiritually, you're getting, you're growing and growing and growing. You're growing bigger and bigger and much bigger spiritually. That's what it means building up. That doesn't mean you'll not go to heaven if you don't speak in tongues. No. Speaking in tongues is not required to get you to heaven. No. Speaking in tongues is required for you in this world here now. That is where you need. In heaven, you don't need tongues. You will not need tongues and prophecy. They will all stop. In this world, as long as you are in this world, you need this gift which will empower you and strengthen you. So, 1 Corinthians 14.4 says, The one who speaks in tongues builds himself up, but the one who prophecy builds up the church. So, what is prophecy? What is prophecy? Prophecy is an inspired speaking, inspired speech, an inspired preaching is also prophecy. Prophecy is not just one person 
walking in trance saying something in the future yes that is prophecy that is not just prophecy anything that you speak that is that is that you have an inspiration from the word of god and you speak that that becomes prophecy even preaching an inspired preaching is also prophecy but a sermon that is well prepared may not be a prophecy because anybody can do a well prepared sermon that need not be a prophecy but an inspired message something that has a great revelation that is a prophecy too and paul is encouraging each other even a good word that you say for your church member like for example somebody may be suffering with sickness and when you come up and say no my god our god is a healer he heals he is yehova jehova rafa he heals that is an inspired word when you speak to somebody or somebody struggling with a job or doesn't know what to do or an issue with at workplaces workplace and when you come with a word of promise from the scriptures at that time to encourage that person to build that person up that is prophecy and that is what paul is telling here i want all of you pursue it try it pursue it when you see somebody stops you i mean it's okay to say what a lovely dress you're wearing that is very good way of encouraging somebody but pursue somebody build somebody up in a good word in a good promise when you say oh you look beautiful you lost weight the hairstyle is beautiful and good yes that is all good but go beyond that by encouraging them in by prophesying something good upon their life say something nice say something a problem you know they're going through tough situations uh, but you can proclaim god's word upon their life the holy spirit will implant that word that you can speak at that time encourage it pursue it try to do it when you're speaking to somebody ask the holy spirit holy spirit what do you want me to speak to them through me lord and the lord will give you a word maybe it's a verse maybe it's a, a promise if something positive definitely you know not that you put on too much weight you know that's not a prophetical word that is probably putting down somebody you know so say something nice prophet and pursue that yeah that's what we need to do and then what it says is tongues what is tongues what is tongues what is the meaning of tongues the tongues here is i wanted to show three different kinds of tongues one is spiritual language a tongue can be when you read all the scriptures about speaking in tongues and when you study about acts and corinthians and romans you will find that there are three types of tongues mentioned here one is a spiritual language it is a spiritual language you speak it is a form of speech that is inspired by the holy spirit it is unintelligible without translation it is addressed to god it this is a mystical utterance and it's it's and 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 it's a different form of language paul calls it a an angelic language in in chapter 13 verse 1 first corinthians 13 1 paul talks about it this is a spiritual language so one type of tongues is a spiritual language that we see the second one the second type of tongues that we see in the scriptures is an ecstatic language it is a it is a form of speech that is not intelligible language but consists of certain strange sounds strange sounds springing from an emotion or of a spiritual experience a static language this is another kind of tongues and the third kind of tongues is an actual foreign language it is a kind of one which we see in acts chapter 2 where the apostles and the, uh, the spoken tongues and it happened many other times too recorded a couple of times in acts where they speak a language basically in acts chapter 2 what's where they speak it in different languages 70 different languages where this now the, the the only problem in the scripture is whether they spoke in the language or people heard the language the scripture when you read the scripture you will hear that the people understood their language so we are not sure whether the apostles really spoke the foreign language or whether the people who heard it heard that in their language we don't know but either way it was a foreign kind of language that we see another kind of tongues that we see so three kind of tongues we see in the scriptures one is the uh, the spiritual language language given by the holy spirit nobody understands it you're speaking to god another one is an ecstatic language which is basically certain forms of sound that you make if it will sound gibberish i guess in some when you listen to it or it can be an actual foreign language these are things that we see in the scriptures now in first corinthians 14:2 it says first corinthians 14:2 it says for the one who speaks in tongues speaks not to men but to god 
for no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the spirit. The one who speaks in tongues. So the key is here to speak in tongues. Start speaking in tongues. You need to start speaking in tongues. You need to express prayer in a language that you do not know. You know, have you, I know most, all of you who are parents here in this group, or if you can listen to me, if you are a parent, and if you have a child, you know how it is to make a child start to speak, right? You all have gone through that experience, am I right? We all have gone through the experience. I have gone through it twice, that experience, to see. And Johnny, my son, started speaking slow, late. So we know, experience more of it, of how to start making to speak. You know how parents are, mothers are there, like, you know, you teach your child, mama will do it. This is who, who is this? Look at me. This is mama, that is dada. You know, you try to tell and speak, mama will give it to you. And you keep this repeating this word, mama, 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 mama again, so that the child will learn that you are the mama, right? You are the mama. And then you wait and wait and try to make sure the child says mama. And suddenly the child opens the mouth and says dada. And you're like, oh, he spoke the word, but he spoke dada first, not mama. And then you get upset. You're teaching mama, but he said dada. You know, these are things that we all go in life through, right, as a parent. And we all have gone through this experience of trying to teach a child how to speak, right? In the same way, spiritual language also, you have to start speaking. It might sound gibberish at once, at, at the beginning. It might sound chill, childish. That's what Paul says. It looks sounds childish, okay? In some portions, when, you, when people start speaking, the others, outsiders thought they were drunk, yeah? It, you look like a fool speaking in tongues sometimes. Yes, I agree. Paul says that, but that's a fact. That's how you start speaking. And you know, initially it might sound weird. It could be just syllables and things like, like for example, some children, you know, um, children come home and they're, they're very small. They're just beginning to speak. And then you have like one little boy coming and says, da, do, 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 su, or something like that. And then you don't know what the child spoke. And then the elder sister will come up and say, yeah, he said he wants to make su, su, or he wants to we, pee, you know. And so you can't understand it, but an elder sister or the mother can understand it. In the same way, certain things in language, in spiritual language, you can't understand it. It's to God. Only God can understand it. That's how it is even in the spiritual languages. You have to start speaking it. You know what? These kind of languages, don't wait for something to happen from outside to come and fall on your head and to feel shiverish and then you start speaking. That is not relevant here. Speaking in tongues is from the inside. You have it inside of you. It is there inside of you. You bring it out. The whole See, uh, the, the Spirit of God lives in you. Out of your mouth shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your mouth shall flow. So it is from the inside you bring it out. So don't wait for something from outside to make you start speaking in tongues. No, the Holy Spirit is inside of you to start speaking in tongues. Remember, sometimes when you start speaking, you might think, is it the devil speaking through me? Now, sometimes the devil does speak through you. That's another case. But here we're not talking about that. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, what does it say? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3 says, Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever say Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is the Lord except in the Holy Spirit. So if you can confess with your mouth that Jesus is the, is the Lord, you are doing it because of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. If you have the Holy Spirit lives in you, and if you believe that you're speaking in tongues by the power of the Holy Spirit, it is the language of the tongues from the Holy Spirit. That is a fact. That's what this verse says. It cannot be from the evil spirit. You cannot speak a tongues from the evil spirit if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. That's what Paul says in chapter 12, verse 3. So don't be afraid. Start speaking. It might be dada, dada, mama, susu, whatever. It might be, you know, it might be consonants first. But as you progress, as you build yourself up, vowels will come in and you will see it's filling up. And it's, and it's filling up and makes some sense now. And sometimes you feel so excited when you start speaking. You f you Sometimes you feel certain power when you speak. Sometimes you want to sing when you speak. Sometimes you want to, you know, you know, wave your hands and cut and slice and things like that when you speak in tongues. These are things that happen when you speak in tongues. I remember a time before going for a meeting. Um, it was a meeting when I was working with a contractor. And I had promised a particular time uh, certain certain furniture would be begun installation at a project. So I'm going for this 
progress meeting and I know the furniture didn't arrive. It was late because of certain issues that happened in the airport. And I gave my word at that time that the furniture will, be, will, begin, will begin installation of the furniture on a particular date. And I'm going for the progress meeting. I know it's going to be an embarrassing state where you gave your word and nothing happened on site. And I was worried. I don't know what to say. I didn't have any answer. So I started speaking in tongues and I started speaking in tongues all the while when I'm driving to that work, I started speaking in tongues. And when I went there for the meeting, we we're all sitting turns and explaining what is the progress that you achieved last week or last month. And just before it was my turn to speak, it was a guy who was bringing in the carpets. And it so happened that the carpets, which were supposed to be delivered the week before the furniture comes, that didn't come. So there you go. Bingo. Something clicked in my mind. So if the carpets are not there, then you don't need the furniture. So who cares when the furniture comes if the carpet is not there? So you see, I, I was saved that embarrassing situation of saying that I couldn't keep up my word or even probably losing my job in that situation too. That could have happened. But the Holy Spirit worked spiritually in that realm at that time so he could turn things around for you. Even today when I go to sight, when I go, I start speaking in tongues, I declare God's word and I find out that certain situations um, God gives you the ability to see things that can go wrong in a project or a place and you can bring it up and start solving issues before it happens to. There are times when the, when the boss comes and gives you a big file of 200, 300 pages of a file and he says, I want this reviewed in one hour and I want your recommendation in one hour. How can you review 200, 300 pages of document in, in a couple of hours? And when you speak in tongues, let me tell you, the Holy Spirit will speed up that thing. and It builds you up. The Holy Spirit builds you up to review it. And He will show you things, highlight things to you, which are important. You know what? The contractors hate me for that. My bosses like me for this. And the whole key behind all this is because speaking in tongues builds you up and helps you in your workplaces. Wherever you're going, in, your, in every realm of your life, let me tell you, Speaking in tongues helps you, builds you up so that you can be a stronger person spiritually. That will outplay, that will bring forth in your physical life also, in every realm of your life. So if you have this urge within you that I want to also speak in tongues, let me tell you the Holy Spirit is nudging you to start speaking in tongues. You don't need anybody to pray for you. Of course, we will pray together at the end. But you don't need anybody to pray for you. Just start speaking. It's inside of you. You just need to bring it up. Just like how you encourage small children to start speaking. Now, I want you to think of yourself as a small child and start speaking in this language, in the spiritual language. It can be just syllables. It can be an ecstatic sounds. But start doing it. You will be successful. You will, you will, you will be able to speak in that. So be encouraged. Now, speaking in tongues and prophecy is not just a New Testament thing. It used to happen in the Old Testament too. If you go to 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 5 to 6, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 5 to 6, you will see prophecy which is happening. Saul, the first king of Israel, starting to prophecy. You see that. And it says, we pick up from chapter 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 5 onwards. It says, after that you shall come to uh, Gibeth Elohim, where there, where there is a garrison of the Philistines. And there, as soon as you come to the city, you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a harp. This is now Samuel telling to Saul. Tam uh, you'll see the prophets coming down from the high place with a harp, tambourine, flute, and lyre before them prophesying. Then the Spirit of the Lord will rush upon you and he will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Look at that. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will become another man, turn to another man, you will start prophesying. Right? And then verse 9 and 10, same chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. When he turned his back to leave Samuel, God gave him another heart and all these signs will, came to pass that day. So Saul became another man. God turned, changed his heart and he started to prophesy. means he started to say God's word. Now, that is what happened in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit never resided in anybody. It used to come upon certain people at a particular time for a particular purpose and then it used to leave. It used to come upon certain prophets or certain kings. And here we see Saul also, uh, the Holy Spirit came at, for the, at that time. And then 
He started prophesying. But today in the New Testament, you don't wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. You already have the Holy Spirit in you when you become a born again child. You already have the Holy Spirit in you. You don't wait for the Holy Spirit to come. So if the Holy Spirit is already in you, what are you waiting for? You don't have to wait for speaking in tongues. You just need to start speaking in tongues. Right? That's what we see about Holy, uh, the prophecy in the Old Testament. Speaking in tongues also was there in the Old Testament. If you go to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10 and 11. Now when you read the scripture in certain versions, it will sound very different. Okay? Isaiah 28, 10 and 11. If you open your Bibles, I know you don't have lexic, uh, Lexan English version. But look at how it sounds in the LED translation. It says, For it is blah, blah upon blah, 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 blah upon blah, blah, gaga upon gaga, gaga upon gaga, a little here, a little there. That's what it says. This is the real translation. Okay, This is what you say in the tongues. I'll read the verse second if you didn't get it. It says, For it is blah, blah upon blah, 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 blah upon blah, blah, and gaga upon gaga, gaga upon gaga. A little here, a little there. That's what the scripture says. I know. When you read your translation in NJV, Amplified, it will all say, Line upon line, precepts upon precepts. That's what it says. But actually, the real word in the translation, as I say, is, Blah blah and gaga. So it might sound like Baba and Gaga, Gugu, whatever it sounds, it might and in then verse eleven it says, for it says verse eleven, for he will speak, that is God will speak with stammering and another tongue to his people. So sometimes it looks like stammering the the the, the 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 you know a person who stammers, how does it sound? It looks sounds like that. For it might sound just like that. That's how God speaks to some people in some ways. This is one of the ways God speaks. And that is seen in the Old Testament too. So it might sound gibberish. It might sound like a baby talk. But never let me tell you, start doing it. Unless you start doing it, you will not be able to progress in it. And prophecy, uh, tongues builds you up. Tongues builds you up. Yeah. I want all of you to get, this, get excited to start speaking. It, it, speaking in tongues is not for public. It is, uh, it is for mostly for private for your own, in your own life. So when you're driving your car, start speaking. If you're taking a shower, start speaking. At home, start speaking. And you will see God's working, power working in your lives. So this, this verse basically sounds more like, actually in Hebrew, that blah, blah and gaga word, it's actually saw, 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 and, you know, and qua, qua, that's how the real word in Hebrew is written there. Yeah, so it might sound gibberish, but start speaking. So that's how the Holy Spirit worked in, in the olden days. It used to be for a moment. It used to come upon as an anointing upon somebody's life at a particular time. But in the New Testament, it is from inside us. The Holy Spirit works inside us. All right. So 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says, The one who speaks in tongues builds up himself, but the one who prophesies builds up the church. So in the scriptures, we see in the scriptures, chapter 14, we see about a comparison between tongues and prophecy. What does tongues do and what does prophecies do? We will quickly uh, go through that and then conclude uh, together. It says tongues. What does tongues do? The characters of tongues in, in the scriptures. I have jotted down these uh, verses and it highlighted what does, what does each verse do. Verse 2 says that tongues... Speaking is not to men, but to God. You're speaking to God, not to man. And you're speaking mysteries in the spirit. That is verse 2. Verse 4 says, tongues builds oneself, yourself. You're building yourself up, tongues. Verse 14 says, your spirit pray and the mind is unfruitful. When you pray in tongues or when you speak in tongues, the spirit is praying. But your mind is inactive at that time. That is the important factor about tongues. You're not praying in your mind. You're not praying. Sometimes you think about, I need to pray like this. God, you should do like this. But in tongues, God, this this, this is uh, overrid. Your mind is overridden and you speak, your spirit speaks directly to God. Number verse 15 says, pray, you pray in the spirit, you sing in the spirit and that's where your mind is not involved. Verse 16 says, people can't say amen. When you say a lot, when you speak only in tongues, when you're gathering, in a gathering, when you together, when you when you're thanking God in tongues, people don't get involved. People cannot say amen to that. So when you're in a gathering and when you're praising God and thanking God for what you've done, what he has done for you, you don't say that in tongues. You say that in your normal language. That's what Paul is trying to say. Verse 17, 
Uh, other persons are not built up if you are speaking in tongues. It's only yourself. Uh, verse 9, 18, Paul, uh, Paul spoke in tongues more than all of us. He says, Paul speaking in tongues more than all of us. And he says, if I'm with you, I would rather not speak in tongues. I would rather speak something where I can build you up in words, in real words. Okay. Verse 22, tongues are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. And verse 23, if all in, just, if all in the church speak tongues, people will think you're out of your mind. That's what an outsider will think you're out of your mind. That's what Paul is saying. In, these are the characteristics of speaking in tongues. And what about prophecy? What are the characteristics of speaking in uh, prophesying? Prophesying, uh, Paul says here in verse 1, earnestly desire prophecy. Desire it. Okay? Speaking good to, speaking an inspired word upon a child or upon a colleague or a friend or a family member. So earnestly desire that. Verse 3 says, speaks to people for their encouragement and consolation. Prophecy is for, to encourage them and cooperate. Please, you put on weight or you look ugly, that is not prophecy. Okay? Prophecy is an encouragement or a consolation. Any inspired word that you speak. All right. Then, number four. Prophecy builds up the church or rather builds up the believers, the body of believers. It is not, we are talking about, we are not talking about church building. It is not talking about constructing a building. No. We are talking about a body of believers, body of believers. It builds them up. Then, number five. Church may be built up. The gathering will be built up. Number Verse 15, it says, pray with your mind, sing with your mind. That means, your mind is involved. Prophecy is using your mind. Okay, The Lord speaks to you using your mind. Then verse, verse 19 says, Words spoken with my mind in order to instruct others. Then verse 22, Prophecy is a sign not for unbelievers but for believers. Verse 24, If all prophecy, unbelievers will be held accounted for, which means God will be revealed in their life. Verse 25 says, The revelation of God will come in their life so they can know who God is. And these are the things that Paul says about tongues and prophecy. It's very interesting to know that tongues are important for us. Tongues are for ourselves. We need tongues to build ourselves up. While we need prophecy to build the church up. Both are required. Both these are required to build. And we, we need this to build ourselves and to build the church around us. Okay. Now, we'll go to one more few two more verses and we'll close it says first corinthians chapter 14 verses 22 and 25 it says thus tongues are a sign not for believers but for unbelievers here paul says now when you read this verse you might think that paul is contradicting himself he says tongues are not are a sign not for believers for unbelievers and yet at sometimes early he says if you all gather and speak in tongues unbelievers you'll think crazy it doesn't make sense so you might have, might as well prophecy and not tongues it says here while prophecy is a sign for not for unbelievers but for believers. If therefore the whole church comes together and all speak in tongues, an outsider or an unbeliever enters, they will not say that you are will they not say that you are out of your mind. But if all prophecy and an unbeliever or outsider enters, he is convicted by all, he is called to account by all. Verse 25 The secret of his heart are disclosed. And so, falling on his face, he will worship God and declare that God is really among you. So here it says, where people come to know. Now, I want to ask you, Paul is telling about a situation where, where you gather together, it's better you prophesy more, don't speak in tongues until you have an interpretation because if an unbeliever outsider comes, or if others come, they won't know how. Can I ask you a question? How many unbelievers really come to your church? How many unbelievers come to most of the church? In fact, most of the church nowadays are just basically building Christians up and believers rarely come. So if that is the case, how much should the church really speak in tongues? The whole point Paul says not to speak in tongues is for unbelievers. So they will come, they will not understand, you look like drunkards and blah, 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 all that stuff. Or it looks unorderly or not. If the whole point is that, then how come now we are not really speaking in tongues, we are not encouraging? I think we need to. We need to speak in tongues more. Paul says, I speak in tongues more than all of you. So in this in this time, when you see read this last few verses that we read, we find that Paul is contradicting. We might find that Paul is contradicting himself. Where one place he says tongues are for believers. Another place he says tongues are for unbelievers. He says two things. To understand this, you should know that the three types of tongue, uh, tongues that we talked about, theologians have categorized into three P's. 
three P's. What are they? Three P, capital P, three P's. One, they say it's a proof tongues, the first kind of tongue, which is the foreign language. This is we see in Acts chapter 2, the proof tongues or the foreign language. That is, another person understands you're speaking his or her foreign language. And then you have the prophetic tongue, which is we see in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14, where you saying a spiritual language, it is really language, and then somebody interprets that, which becomes a prophecy again. Somebody interprets that. And then you see a personal tongue, which is something between you and God, only you and God. So the three Ps, remember, the three Ps of tongues, which is which are the three Ps? Proof tongue, prophetic tongues, and personal tongues. Theologists have categorized it like this to understand that there's not just one type of tongues, there are three types of tongues that you, that is uh, that recorded in the scriptures. So we all need it. So uh, 1 Corinthians 14.39, it says, So my brothers earnestly desire so my brothers earnestly desire spiritual uh, earnestly desire prophecy desire sorry so my brothers earnestly desire prophecy and do not forbid speaking in tongues what does the verse say earnestly desire prophecy and do not forbid speaking in tongues okay now um, can I, these are the two essentials that Paul is talking about here. Two essentials, that is it. Which are the two essentials? Prophecy and speaking in tongues. These are needed. One is to build yourself, one is to build another person. Now, for those who, are, who can see me on the screen, I have a purple colored two dumbbells in my hand. For those who are listening to me online, imagine me speaking with two dumbbells in my hand. I have two dumbbells in my hand now. One is for tongues, that is to build me up. And the other one is prophecy to build others up. I'm not going to hit you to build you up with this. I'm not going to do that. But you, you don't need a gym, gym to build yourself up. Actually, you know, when you come home and you talk about spiritually, old, when you talk about physically also, you don't need a gym to go yourself, to make yourself strong. No, you just need two dumbbells in the same way. It might sound dumb. But let me tell you, you only require two dumbbells and two things to build yourself spiritually. One is, what are the two things? This one, this is the dumbbell of tongues, which is to build you up. And the other one is the dumbbell of prophecy, which is to build others up. You need these two for a spiritual growth, for spiritual walk in life. You need these two, these two gifts, two, two essentials that, that is going to build yourself up. All right. So. Uh, I want to encourage all of you, if the Holy Spirit has planted in your heart that, yes, I want to try speaking in tongues, I want you to start try speaking in tongues. Sometimes it might take a while to start doing it, to really feel the presence and essence of it, but I want to encourage all of you to start doing it. Start doing it. It's going to help you in your workplace. It is not just spiritually, in your spiritual life, because that is going to come out in your workplace it's going to help you in your workplace. It's going to help you in your family life. Uh, you know, sometimes in life you get so frustrated. You try and try and try. Nothing works out. Even when people go through issues and problems in life, let me tell you, when you speak in tongues, certain things comes out in your life that you'll be able to deal with physically also. Right? So I want to encourage all of you to speak in tongues and to uh, encourage one another by prophesying. These two things. But most important, do that in love. Like you mix coconut in everything in your dish or you mix olive oil in every dish. And if you're in Japan, if you mix soya sauce in any of your dish, as much as you do that as a basic ingredient, let love be the basic ingredient of whether you speak in tongues or you prophecy. Let love be the main thing. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Let's close in prayer. Father Lord, I want to thank you for this beautiful time and we bless you, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, as people desire, Lord, to speak in tongues, Lord, I want to encourage, I want, I want you to confirm in their hearts that it is you who is speaking, Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we bless you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we bless you. And, he is, and as each one of these people who have listened to your voice, Lord, who have got this inspiration within them to speak, to reach out to you, to speak to you directly in tongues, and Lord, encourage them, strengthen them, Show them different ways, Lord Father, how to do it. Remind them 
in their wherever they are, in their workplaces, when they are cooking, when they are cleaning the house or teaching the children. Remind them, Lord, that speaking in tongues will help them. Yes, in every realm of their lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, for, for all your fill yourself, fill you, fill the children, Lord, fill these buckets, fill these people, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Yes, Lord. So they have the confirmation that they can speak, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your love that is shown for us. Thank you for the sacrifice that you've given for us, Lord Jesus, because of which we can today receive the Holy Spirit and by which we can prophesy and we can speak in tongues. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for living in us and for being with us and blessing us. We love you so much. We love you so much, Holy Spirit. We bless you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.